It's February 10th, 1355, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. Town versus gown violence has been part of Oxford life ever since the university's founding. But while these days that rivalry might be communicated by some drunken shouting over a road or a snaky glance in a chip shop, back in 1355, this manifested in a riot that left almost 100 people dead. Which shocked me because uh, I was at Oxford uh, University, as were you, Rebecca, and I knew the phrase town versus gown, and I assumed it referred to a sort of generic culture clash between the educated privileged students and the poorer less educated townspeople through history and the modern manifestation as you suggest is kind of like a friday night fight outside o'neill's or whatever i had no idea that its history involves this day with a massacre of dozens of people it's astonishing so the story starts when some students and priests who were drinking in the swindlestock tavern in carfax complained about the quality of wine to the landlord a guy called john de bereford or of barford who happened to also be the mayor of oxford <laughs> so he wore two interesting hats <laughs> i thought but anyway he was alleged to have responded to their complaint with stubborn and saucy language and what i love about this story is regardless of which source you read like there are hundreds of different accounts with variable details of names it always says that the landlord responded with quote stubborn stubborn and saucy saucy language i'm imagining like the sort of 14th century equivalent of paul carr for ranting about students (laughs) well these differing sources actually become quite important as to what happened next worth saying that at the time the university was kind of part of the church and a lot of the students were in fact members of the clergy so these students Walter de Springhuis and Roger de Chesterfield were also clergymen which makes the whole thing even weirder yeah well you were studying things to help you with divinity weren't you that was the point of going to university you weren't studying business studies no of course you still couldn't unless you were at Oxford Brook <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine why they hated us <laughs> but one important part of that meant that students weren't actually governed by secular law they were governed by canon law which was what the clergy was subjected to at the time which meant that a lot of townspeople found the students extremely annoying because they could basically do whatever they wanted knowing that they would get a slap on the wrist and so in this case according to who you believe the students either threw their wooden flagon at the barman or they beat him with it and either way this quickly descended into a mass brawl and the occupants of the pub spilled out into the Carfax crossroads which is still there now it's right in the centre of Oxford right at the top of the main street yeah the Swindlestock Tavern by the way is a branch of Santander Ah. and so locals and students started gathering on opposing sides in this brawl and it was actually quite easy for them to do because the students and the locals had their own churches and their own church bells Mm. which was St Martin's and St Mary's respectively and so they started ringing them to call for backup and the other thing thing as well to bear in mind is that visually students were very very obviously set apart from the townsfolk because they wore clerical Mm. style gowns which now we would associate with Mm. either oxford dons or with formal events like graduation but at the time all students wore these gowns all the time as everyday wear for a very practical reason it kept them warm because they were sitting down in drafty libraries and halls all day whereas obviously most people would have been working manually so it kind of it was a way of showing to the townspeople that they spent all their days sitting around on their asses essentially Plus, a lot of them also carried swords, and both sides, both the townspeople and the students, also brought bows and arrows. So it's no wonder that this ended in not just sort of casual bloodshed, but actual sort of death. But I don't get how it escalated so quickly. I get that they were angry. I get people knew that the bell meant, come on, chaps, let's have a brawl. Yeah. I don't understand how it quickly, so quickly ended up with thousands of people being involved. 2,000 men came in from the country to help the town. So it seems likely from the sources that what happened on this day was the culmination of decades of tension. The townsfolk were incredibly resentful of the students. Oxford University had started to expand massively from sort of the mid-1200s and they were buying up all of the land. They weren't answerable to the town authorities for any of their misdemeanours, of which there were many. And there had actually been many, like dozens of murders of townsfolk by students and vice versa, to the extent that I think a lot of people know that Cambridge University was founded by students and academics who had left Oxford. But the 
reason that they left Oxford was after the lynching of three students in 1209. And in between wow. these outbreaks of town and gown violence, there was also intra-student rioting occasionally too, because they formed into two rival factions. Actually, to be fair, I went to Oxford and I can tell you there are still these rival factions, the Northerners and the Southerners. <laughs> and there was there's so much rivalry between them that they also had violent riots. Violent rioting was definitely not as kind of a surprise event in Oxford at this time in history. But also those tensions underpinning this moment go all the way back to the Black Death, which had killed a third of the citizens of Oxford, students and townspeople, just a decade earlier. So people were still pissed about that in a way that they are now about coronavirus. Like you can imagine, can't you, like an event escalating, a sort of civil dispute in a town escalating because people have been angry because they've been locked up. It's that sort of vibe. Mm. You've got that going on. And then also the privileges that you mentioned earlier, Rebecca, that the students enjoyed by being part of the university. It wasn't as straightforward as if you were a student, you got privileges. And if you were a townsperson, then you didn't. There was this kind of middle ground where there were tradespeople, for example, who worked in the university colleges who were granted privileges as if they were Oxford students. Mm. So they got cheaper prices for things. They got to do certain work for the university and everyone else didn't. So if you're like landlord of the local bar and mayor of the city is exactly the kind of man who's going to be really angry about that. Yeah. Well, the violence carried on all through Tuesday. And then the next day, the mayor rode out to Woodstock trying to seek the support of the king. And meanwhile, 2000 men came in from the countryside to help the town crying, apparently, as they advanced, slay, slay, havoc, havoc, smite fast, give good knocks. And this is really the moment where it transformed into what we would call a massacre I think you know up until this point the students and the townsfolk had been relatively evenly matched but suddenly you've got 2,000 armed people coming in from the countryside and the students were completely overwhelmed so they retreated Mm. into their halls but they were followed and obviously the assailants massed outside forced their way in and then there were just scenes of incredible chaos Mm. and violence the halls were looted axes not just bows and arrows axes were thrown I mean that did escalate quickly from the, <laughs> the flagon of wine. <laughs> this is why let's take it outside, guys, is not always the best advice. <laughs> this could have been resolved with a free round on the students, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was during this period of time that most of the deaths occurred. In the end, they think it was something like 30-ish townsfolk and about 60 scholars were killed. Mm. But it does seem like a lot of the scholars were really kind of cornered in their halls of residence and basically slaughtered where they stood. It was really incredibly intense. And even though there was death on both sides, the king, Edward III, really punished the townspeople of Oxford. And from that day forward, there was this annual ritual humiliation that continued for, would you believe it, 500 years. Every (laughs) St. Scholastica's Day thereafter, the mayor and bailiffs had to attend, for 500 years, a mass for the souls of the dead and to swear an annual oath to observe the university's privileges. I mean, that's the most incredible punishment a 500 year long thing for uh, admittedly it's pretty bad what happened but uh, but 500 years later you're not still responsible for <laughs> for the stuff that went on the part i love about this is that it went on for 500 years and i was like oh i wonder why it ended you know in the 1800s so randomly and it's just like one of those classic tradition things where the mayor at the time just said i'm not going to do that and then the tradition just died <laughs> yeah he just mm. didn't turn up and there was an annual fine as well a financial penalty that the town had to pay the university, which in itself is ridiculous. Like, if you've been to Oxford, you realise that if anyone should be paying anyone, it should be the university paying the city council (laughs) for dominating the entire city. But anyway, the town had to pay the university this symbolic fine every year of 63 whatever unit of currency it would be to Mm. recognise the estimation they had then that it was 63 students that had been killed and forever you know, this penance had to be paid to the tune of 63. Hmm. And that was only formally rescinded by Parliament in 1955. Yeah. In that same year, it was the 600th anniversary of the riots. The Mayor W.R. Gowers was given an honorary degree. They tried to come to some sort of reconciliation. How Oxford? What a ridiculous conclusion to a thing where dozens of people have been slain where they stood. I know how we can deal with this. We'll give you an honorary degree. <laughs> Okay, so simultaneously, the Vice-Chancellor, Alice Halford-Smith, was made an honorary freeman of the city at a commemoration of the events. So they each gave one another the highest award they could think of. 
I just feel sorry for um, Saint Scholastica. Good point. <laughs> you know, she was the twin sister of Saint Benedict. I think she'd have been turning in her grave at all this. Right. You know, you look up Saint Scholastica's day now on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was a figure of peace. She carries a dove. She wears a nun's habit in most illustrations. And she's known for basically this massive piss-up bar fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow. A lot of people think that uh, Crapper was, was the person who invented the toilet, or the flushing toilet he wasn't. Love the show? Support the show! Patreon.com slash Retrospectors! Part of the ACAST Creator Network.